Federal government pledges more equitable spread of development nationwide. Nigerian troops neutralize scores of terrorists in renewed offensive operations. Nigeria records 520 new COVID-19 infections. And on Good Morning Nigeria today, we shall discuss Nigeria's quest for a more strategic engagement with China. Nigeria and China are about 10,000 kilometers apart in different continents but share certain similarities in reputation. While Nigeria is the most populous country and largest economy in Africa, China is Nigeria's counterpart in Asia in this regard. Very true, Kirian, and uh, bilateral relations between the African and Asian giants have metamorphosed from humble beginnings 50 years ago to more robust frontiers of international cooperation today. In fact, as it stands, uh, China is considered uh, one of Nigeria's most important trading and export partners. And uh, talking about trade, China is uh, one of the world's largest importer of Nigeria's crude oil, and Nigeria is benefiting from infrastructural development and a great deal of financing being offered by China, especially in rail development as well as the procurement of uh, military hardware to counter insurgency in parts of the country. But Kiri, as you very well know, there are studies which now indicate that Nigeria is yet to fully tap from its ties with China in critical areas such as trade, knowledge transfer, a building of industries, SME development and job creation. Now, international relations experts also agree that uh, Sino-Nigerian trade relations are still in favor of China largely, whereas the Chinese population is about seven times that of Nigeria. So how is Nigeria exploring China's huge population for Nigeria's own critical exports? And uh, we know that Nigeria exports uh, products like uh, cassava, ginger, cashew, hides and skin, and we hear even toothpicks uh, to China. But uh, talking about uh, toothpicks, you know, you, you, you can get uh, you, you can bet that uh, we have more Chinese toothpicks in circulation in Nigeria than Nigerian toothpicks in China. Again, China would be a good market for Nigeria textile, Nigeria's textile, but Nigeria's potential in textiles and even hides and skin is yet to be fully tapped to gain comparative advantage in exports with China. So we can go on and on in comparison of the balance of trade uh, with China. But the question to ask is what needs to be done by Nigeria to step up its strategic engagement with China, especially in the areas such as accessibility to the huge Chinese market, industrial capacity building, sectoral knowledge transfer and job creation. Now this is our focus today on the conversation segment on this edition of Good Morning Nigeria and I'd like to welcome you to the program. I'm Kingsley Osadalo. And I'm Kirian Umayo, welcoming you also to the program broadcast uh, as always live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority and uh, from of course the nation's capital city of Abuja. As usual, we'll serve you the complimentary segments in the course of the program. But for now, let's begin with the morning news and of course, Nolene Ebelame is our guide. Good morning, Kiran and Kinsley. Good morning, Nigeria. Here is the news. President Muhammadu Buhari has vowed that his government will protect all religious and ethnic groups, whether majority or minority, in line with its responsibility under the Constitution. In a reaction to reports of breakout of violence in some parts of the country, the president warned that the government will not allow any ethnic or religious group to, struck, to stock up hatred and violence against other groups. He gave assurance that his government will act decisively to stop the spread of any such violence. 
President Buhari appealed to religious and traditional leaders, governors and other elected leaders across the country to join hands with the federal government to ensure that communities in their domain are not splintered along ethnic and other primordial lines. Vice President Yemi Oshibaju has expressed deep sadness over the mayhem and tragic loss of lives that occurred at Shasha Market in Ibadan, calling on the people and their leadership to cooperate with government and security agencies uh, towards ensuring the return of peace, which has been existing among the community for several decades. The Vice President stated this shortly after a condolence visit to the family of late Latif Kayode Jakonde in Lagos. The role of government, that's the duty of government, and we must do it. We mustn't fail in that duty. But the citizen must support government and must never allow a situation where we take the law into our own hands. The renewed offensive operations by troops of Operation Turatake Bangu under Operation Lafia Dole Theater has continued to inflict casualty on the Boko Haram terrorists and the Islamic State of West Africa province criminals. A statement by the Director Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Mohammed Yerima says, among the latest exploit is the ambush by troops on terrorists along Route Banki Junction through Pulka Axis, Borno State, killing two of the most wanted terrorist commanders. Brigadier General Yerima notes that several arms were recovered from the criminals. The Chief of Army Staff, Major General Ibrahim Atahiru, commended the troops for the feat and further charged them to intensify aggressive clearance of the Sambisa forest and environs. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, says no part of the country will suffer intervention neglect because of its geographical location or political inclination. Boss Mustafa stated this at the inauguration and handing over of road and storm water drainage at the Federal College of Education, YOLA, sponsored by the Ecological Fund Office. The will provide a window of opportunities for economic growth of the institution. Panama State, regrettably, being amongst one of the states prone to severe flooding that results in damage of property and in some cases loss of lives here in Peru. Thousands of rural and vulnerable women across Nigeria are to benefit from a federal government special grant of 20,000 Naira each to boost their businesses. The federal government, special grant mostly for indigent women, is to enable them access financial capital required for economic activities they embark on. Ilorin and Mina in Niger State were some of the points of call. Experiences of people below the poverty line and those that are vulnerable to shocks that have now made a positive turnaround after benefiting from these programs. This 20,000 will take me a long way because I'm running restaurants. They are very excited today. I'm very happy. Now to update on COVID-19 in Nigeria, 520 new COVID-19 infections have been recorded in Nigeria in the last 24 hours, bringing the country's total confirmed cases to 146,184. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC says the new infections were found in 18 states and the FCT. Ondo recorded the highest with 120 cases, Borno 41, Eboi 37, Benue 33, Plateau 30, FCT 29, Nasarawa and Ogun 25 cases each, as well as Edo and Oshun with 24 cases each. Katsuna recorded 22 new COVID-19 cases, Kaduna 21, Niger 20, Kwara 14, Ekiti 13, Yobe 10, Oyo 4, while Bailsa and Jigawa recorded one case each. With 23,594 active cases nationwide, 
120,838 of Nigeria's total confirmed COVID-19 cases have been discharged, while the death toll is now 1,752. That's the morning news for now. The program continues with Kinsley and Kirian after this break. I am Nolin Ebel Ame. Good morning. My dear party members, there comes a time when all good people must not only speak, but rise up and get involved in the task of improving their society. The need has never been greater than now for all Nigerians to actively contribute to the all important task of nation building by bringing about good leadership and governance. For most citizens, their greatest weapon is their vote. Register now for your party and register when the time comes for elections. Political parties are the main vehicles under our laws through which citizens can participate in the ideas and practices of our democracy. As we have seen happening around the world, good citizens join political parties and use them to bring about the changes they desire. And therefore, endorsing the nationwide membership registration and the revalidation exercise embarked upon by our party, the All Progressive Congress. I call on patriotic Nigerians to come out during the exercise which starts on the 26th of January and avail themselves of the opportunity to join the APC. Thank you and may God bless our country. that I was interested in that position. 50 year anniversary. You mean anniversary? I mean, it's not even I talk with that now. Now you let not farm you. You don't want me to die, me. Not farm me because of farm you.
watching Good Morning Nigeria, live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Next on the program is Business News with Chimobi Water Nanji. Solving the challenge of access to finance for small businesses, stakeholders believes, calls for a review of the current interest rate system by deposit money banks, DMBs, and other financial institutions to below 2%. This is believed to boost the confidence of small businesses on the financial institutions and thereby open up new frontiers in the SME subsector. Former member, House of Representatives Ned Nwoko, while briefing journalists in Abuja on State of the Nation, pointed out that relevant stakeholders, including the fiscal and monetary authorities, should pay additional attention to the issues of financing small startups, as this will open up job opportunities for the nation. We should, be, we should be competitive. Banks don't function in Nigeria the way banks should function. Banks, banks are there to lend money, not just to take your money. They are there to finance your projects. Whatever it is that, that you, you have ideas for and you have feasibility study and it is, you know, uh, feasible. You hear of banks making profit about 400 billion, 500 billion. That profit is for the shareholders. Government can make banks. They can compel banks almost. Let me use the word compel banks to use half of that money to lend. With business news, I'm Chimobi Walter Naji. Well, thank you, Chimobi, for that package. And next on the program is Newspaper Review. Bayo Atuebi, our newspaper reviewer, is right here with us. Bayo, good morning and welcome. I hope you Thank have a nice you, Kingsley. Weekend. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning, Kiria. Yeah, good morning, morning, good to see you. Thank good you. to see you again today. We have, the, uh, we have about uh, three uh, newspapers this morning for review. Uh, first, let's begin with uh, the Nation newspaper. Uh, both the nameplate of the Nation newspaper. Kidnapping has become business, says Masari, that's the governor of Katsina State. Uh, the stories on page five of the nation. I never supported crimes by Fulani Healthsmen, says Bauchi State Governor. The, page, the, 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 news, uh, the story is on page eight. Nigerian stocks lose 663 six, billion naira amid global rally. Is on the business page of the nation's uh, 17 to 24. All right, federal government endows Benue good farmers. It's on page 36. Now, below the name plate, we have CBN sells 15 months for 21.3 billion national uh, theatre remodeling. Uh, full details on page 5. Now, new airlines raise stakes in domestic aviation sector. Fares may drop. Emirates extends suspension of flights. All right. Now, the list story this morning on the nation. Buhari, we won't tolerate ethnic religious violence. Uh, with the right there, prevent conflicts, president tells governors and monarchs. Um, warning, members lock Benue pastor and worshippers out of church. That's page four. And that's the last story here. Um, the Asian's front page, Kingsley. Okay, we also took a look at the front page of the Punch newspaper from um, above the name flag right to the foot of the page. Federal government plans concession of Lagos Trade Fair, Calabar, and Kano SEZ, that's the Special Economic Zones. National Theatre, CBN creates clusters and projects 35,000 jobs. Ohaneze, Pandev, and the Fenifere, Irit NIS, that's Immigration Service, 
for say no armed headers. There are two riders with that headline, no armed headsmen since uh, we signed the uh, Midas and Operation Swift response. That's according to the spokesman. Now there is a ground design to confuse Nigerians with false narratives, says the Fedefer. Now the list story says inbound passengers shown isolation and enforcement collapses. Our priority is on testing, not compulsory self-isolation, says Lagos. Self-isolation enforcement controlled by NCDC, not states. That's according to Kano. It's personal responsibility attributed to the FCT. And FAN shifts enforcement to NCDC. Now, the photographs there on the front page um, come with the story. Makinde Akeridolu meet Ibadan market warring parties. Preach peace. Kwan Kwasu welcomes 370 students sponsored on foreign scholarships. Senators mobilize support for anti-open grazing. Mark Ban lied. Only 107 headsmen returned to Kaduna, not 4,000. That's according to the leader. That's on page 8. Police silent as gunmen kidnapped, kidnapped 18 travelers in Niger. COVID-19 violation. FCTA marks two nightclubs for demolition. NACA warns, as report says, Nigerians use 578 million condoms annually. That's on page 11. Bye. Thank you, uh, Kinsley. Let's start with President Muhammad Buhari's warning to that government will not allow any ethnic or religious group to stoke up hatred and violence against other groups. This is following the clash that ensued on Thursday at Shasha Ibadan. President condemns the violence and assured his government will act decisively to stop any such violence. He appealed to religious and traditional <coughs> leaders across the country to join hands with the federal government to ensure that communities are not splintered along ethnic and other premodal lines. The government will protect all religious and ethnic groups, whether uh, majority or minority, in line with the res responsibility under the Constitution. Also reacting to the Sasa clash, the Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibaju, while visiting to condole the family of late uh, Latif Jakonde, said F uh, traders from the north had engaged in business with their brothers from the southwest mm -hmm. as Shasha and have lived there many years peacefully and there has even been intermarriage between them. He said Shasha has come to represent unity and warned that the, the, this disagreement between individuals when criminal acts is committed must stop. We must ensure that we, what we see as a criminality must be arrested and punished according to the law. Um, the vice president warned against individuals taking laws into their hands, stressing that every Nigerian has a constitutional right to live, work, and enjoy their lives in safety and peace under the law. Uh, and it may be recalled that on Thursday, uh, an altercation between a woman, a pregnant woman, a shop owner, and a cobbler uh, led to and a porter led to this confusion. A cobbler who had come to intercede in between the woman and the porter was said to have been hit and was rushed to hospital. Unfortunately, it was said that he died in hospital and that led youths to go on rampage in Shasha area. Shops and markets and property were re destroyed. Governor Shei Makinde already ordered the closure of the Shasha market and impose a curfew of, uh, from 7, 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, and uh, the Shasha market is in the Akinyele area of the Ibadan local government area. Uh, Governor of Ondo joined his Oyo State counterpart and they visited the leaders in that area, the ballet of the area and the uh, leader of the uh, indigenous Hausa group there. And they spoke and appealed to them to live in peace and calm down. He says they assured them that uh, whoever had violated the law would not go scot-free. Meanwhile, our colleague, uh, Mrs. Chidiabere Onya, NTA Portal Court news reporter who was kidnapped at gunpoint, has since reunited with, with his family. The manager news Portal Court zonal okay, office, the, the Uche lady, Njoko. He's a lady, right? Yeah? He's a lady. Yes, yes. Okay. Right. Uh, the manager news, uh, Uche Njoko, <coughs> said she has been released. 
Uh, I spoke with the husband who said she's back. The NUJ state chapter, also Stanley Job, the, ch uh, the chairman, also expressed concern. I say, well, this is what we have been praying for. There are two aspects to the story. Uh, one story says he was rescued by the police. Another says he was released. And that those two have different implications. Mm -hmm. However, it was indicated that it was not shown whether any ransom was paid or not. The story that you read, uh, Kingsley, about 18 passengers, they were traveling by Niger State Transport Authority, traveling from Kontogura to Mina. When they got to a village that is uh, along the route, uh, what is the other village again? Yakila village. They were waylaid by bandits and all asked to come down. They only left the woman who was carrying the baby alone and then they marched the 18 other passengers into the bush. The uh, Niger State Emergency Agency has confirmed that actually 18 passengers have been abducted. Uh, you recall that there was alarm in Lagos over uh, Occupy Lekki. Well, the police, Lagos State Police Command says its personnel and men will remain at that lekki until further notice. This was uh, to the, based on the initiative to forestall the Occupy lekki, which was uh, aimed to, uh, for demonstration on Saturday. Forty persons were arrested and they were arraigned before a, 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 a mobile court and for creating tension and behaving in a manner that could cause breach of public peace. Earlier, there have been postings on the social media threatening that Lagos will won again. And this was predicated on the decision of the Lagos judicial panel that the toll gate should open. I, ironically, the persons who are seeking justice from uh, the judicial panel for alleged massacre of protesters are now protesting against the judicial panel for authorizing the lucky toll gate to open. But uh, Lagos State Police Command said that its men and women and personnel are going to be at five locations across Lagos, and they will remain there until peace is maintained. Well, talking about the judicial uh, panels of inquiry that uh, were mandated to be set up on the heels of the Has Ensas protest, the Lagos panel uh, uh, appears to have been the most active of all. Um, over the weekend, there was a report that in Anambra State, four members of the panel have resigned because they say the panel has not been, as it were, mobilized to function effectively. And elsewhere around the country, you hardly hear of, uh, of reports of the proceedings of those other panels. Those panels at the time were given uh, six months within which to complete their assignment. But who actually, who actually gave them six weeks? Because you six know, it was, uh, yeah, six six months. Months. It was uh, mainly the governors of states that actually constituted the, the panel. Yes, that's, that's, that's under the law. It is the states that can constitute such mm -hmm. panels. And uh, if you recall, following the destruction in different parts of the country, the National Economic Council met, the Governor's Forum also met, and the virtual meetings, and there was an agreement that as part of uh, meeting the NSAS uh, demands, the uh, protesters' demands, which the president had uh, acceded to, there was a five-point demand, they said that the panels of inquiry will be set up to look into uh, the allegations of gross abuses against the now disbanded uh, SARS and get justice uh, to the victims. Well, so I, th I think there's lack of coordination at, at the federal level because one would have thought that uh, states having set up the you know, panels, that there should be a, a, a coordinating uh, you know, no, body. No, no, Kieran, mm. Kieran. The, National Human Rights Commission also has that for the Federal Capital Territory. Yes. Uh, this is a state responsibility. So on that view, set up those commissions of inquiry under state laws. You know, but, but SARS actually was a federal government establishment. Uh, no, it's you know, immaterial. It was, was but the activities, the activities, the country, yes, the, uh, the activities were in states. And so it is the state laws that were breached. But it is at the end of the six month period that the various recommendations and proposals for action going forward will be brought together and then you now have, a, as it were, a harmonized uh, approach to what to do to forestall so, reoccurrence, mm. otherwise mm. meet out uh, justice to, to those persons who have been found guilty. But, but Kiriam, the point before that coordination is what is happening at the various judicial panels and in the in states. states. If Anambra was notorious in the media, according to the reports, uh, for the Okuzu, they called it Okuzu uh, uh, 
SARS, <laughs> SARS uh, <laughs> operations. Office, but operations yeah. uh, there appears to be nothing, nothing has been heard now. Uh, elsewhere around the country, it's virtually the same thing, with the exception, as I said, of Lagos and probably a few other places. Well, you see that the level of destruction was massive in Lagos compared to other places. Um, and then the SARS, influence of SARS was, was very relative across the country. It was not as prominent in many other states as it were, particularly in uh, Lagos, I think uh, Oyo, uh, Anambra, and a few other states where there were prominent, uh, many so there were of violations. In, ma in major south, south, uh, 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 southern states you know, yes. of, of Nigeria. In Enugu, for instance, it's the same story. Mm -hmm. uh, Enugu and Anambra are just about uh, 45 minutes away from, mm -hmm. from each other, right? So I think uh, the menace of SARS at that period of time, you know, uh, actually was f felt mainly in the southern part of the country. COVID-19 now. Um, 520 new cases were recorded yesterday in 18 states. Uh, this time, Ondo State is having 170, followed by Bono with 141. But if we look, up, look back, last week, Nigeria recorded 100 deaths from COVID-19. Uh, this is the second highest since the second wave began about December. 13 new cases of the new strain have been recorded uh, in Nigeria now. Six cases of the new strain were discovered just only last week. So. Uh, we have to be very careful. And the new strain has a tendency to be more devastating. Is it Nigerians' uh, new strain? The new strain. The is UK, it UK or South Africa? UK and South Africa strain are the two that have been identified in Nigeria, in Nigeria. so far, yes. Well, yeah. I think that part of what the authorities may seek to do with regard to anticipating a spike, part of what we saw uh, with the second wave arose largely from... Uh, the Christmas and New Year festivities where people were moving about. Yes. Uh, so at the end of the Valentine celebrations now, maybe by the uh, second or third week after that, let's see, let's see what the numbers will look like. Mm. And then you get from that one, you get into the Easter, uh, Easter yeah, celebrations. And then so you can literally anticipate, you know, when you are going to have uh, spike, yeah, uh, a spike in, 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 in the numbers. Yeah. But part of what is of interest uh, to me, and uh, Kiran, I'm sure you, you, have, you have also talked about this. What are we seeing in terms of local research in, uh, in seeking to probably sketch through medical research now the epidemiology of the coronavirus in Nigeria? Uh, uh, Last year, if you recall, we were on Kano, all those un unexplained deaths, in Kano, unexplained deaths. Uh, there was no way you could cover up those unexplained deaths mm. because the grave diggers said, look, they were uh, in yes, overdrive yes, in yes, terms, yes, in terms of traffic. traffic. Yes, but suddenly it, it dropped. And then the numbers that we have, yes, we're having a second wave, prominent persons have died, but those numbers cannot be compared to the numbers you have in South Africa. Cannot be compared to the numbers we have in Europe or America. What is at play? Is it just the fact that we get a lot of sun, or what, what is at play? What is what is? I mean, you see all kinds of things. People will tell you that if you take uh, a balumo, this uh, African cherry has vitamin C. You have don't don't uh, don't uh, take that as <laughs> professional advice. I'm not a physician, but I'm not a nutritionist either. But all kinds of things. Is it in our diet? Is it is there something that has prepared us? You know to an extent that we are not having, as persons had feared about a year ago, that look, Africa and Nigeria in particular was going to be well, a graveyard. Well, well the, the thing is, uh, it also depends on the extent of, uh, you know, uh, testing that we are carrying out. Many persons, you know, have, uh, you know, uh, uh, suffered COVID and survived on their own, one way or another, because it has been said initially that uh, some persons might survive uh, COVID without actually taking those medications. So if you carry out, like uh, in, uh, in South Africa, they carry out extensive testing, extensive testing. Well, an epidemiologist, a professor for that matter, described COVID-19 as an aerosol epidemic. And he says that it is most devastating in cold weathers than it is in hot weather. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that is our saving grace. Mm -hmm. Earlier on, they have projected that by July of the last year, Nigeria will have registered more than 200,000. Up to now, mm -hmm. uh, well, well, we well, are well, still about 146,000. But, but you yes, find no, out uh, in Jos, mm -hmm. in Plateau, you know, that is uh, yeah, Plateau, cold. Plateau, yeah? Plateau, 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 Plateau numbers, yes, high numbers. They have yeah, high numbers. That's you know, right. In, in but Kiria, Kiria, yes, it, it's about testing. But ultimately, uh, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. What, what is important is not so much that you have an ailment, but as to the fatalities. Yes. 
are you, are you with me? Mm. Because there are persons who are said to be asymptomatic that you have it, and so you don't know that you have it, you don't uh, uh, you manifest the symptom. But you know, what is the consequence of having it? If it is in the fatalities, look at the numbers, look at Italy, look at Spain, look at Germany, you know, and look at the US, you know, see, closing on half a million. That is why the, the governor of uh, Kogi State, you know, insisted, you know, that... Uh, no, 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 you know, we have 9.9% like you know, uh, of survival you know, from that virus. But he was even saying that, look, instead of uh, putting 10 billion naira in the, you know, to purchase vaccines, we can use those things to, of course, uh, you know, uh, 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 beef up uh, uh, infrastructure and the facilities in our hospitals across the nation. Well, well, you know, uh, because it's people it's survived a, the virus. It's, people it's, survived it's the virus. a good advice, but the danger, there's another danger now. Uh, there's Ebola reported in, across Guinea. And we need to be very careful because uh, trust border persons moving up and down. We yeah, need to be careful yeah, so that we don't import. We don't import. Yes. We don't import Ebola to join the crisis we are having with COVID. And, yeah. and Ebola, and Ebola is more devastating. You're saying more build, devastating. The, yeah, build infrastructure, health infrastructure. You said mm. across the country. The Federal Medical Center in Lokoja, the capital of uh, Kogi State, <laughs> was destroyed, damaged by hoodlums. Mm -hmm. Have those hoodlums been arrested and prosecuted? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Editorial is on the licensing private universities. Uh, bio. Yes, uh, the editorial is commending that uh, the Honorable Minister of Education announced twenty new universities, bringing the total number to about uh, private universities to about ninety-nine. Uh, there are those who have commended it as uh, as a positive development. Others also say that uh, this proliferation will have its cause in, in, in the sense that uh, quality and standard will drop because uh, they are arguing that most of these private universities have no other avenue from sourcing their personnel but from public universities. And again, it is going to increase the speed of visiting lecturers because you now have many more universities that will demand more lecturers than are available. So you now have university lecturers uh, trying to fill in the void by becoming uh, uh, visiting lecturers. And this is part of the crisis that is coming with IPs and uh, no IPs or UTAs or no UTAs because it has not captured the peculiarities of their institution. But by and large, the editorial is saying that, yes, it's a positive development, but we must have our eyes on the value and quality and standard of education. It is not enough to have rot education, but practical education that will make graduates not become person who will sit and wait for a white collar job, but they will be self-employed and will be able to take initiatives to live their own living. Very well said, Bayo. I'd like to appreciate you for being around. I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you too. It's Good Morning Nigeria, live on the network service of the NTA. We're taking a short break now. When we return, we'll get ahead with our item.